Hello and welcome to a, a not a managerial special, not a championship special, but a takeover special from the Onsport Podcast. I'm Craig Savage and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. Yes, it is a takeover special and the team that's just been taken over is Hull City. The long-awaited takeover has finally been complete. The Allen family are out of the football club and we've been replaced by Akin Ilakali. So let's get on to the Allen family. 11 years at Hull, three promotions, three relegations, an FA Cup final, Europa League qualifying, and a name change, potential. <laughs> well, of that would turn into a farce. So let's get the good, bad, and ugly out of the way. Let's start with the ugly. Uh, Hull City Tigers was one of Alan, Alan family's main projects, which failed. Yeah, it's, I mean, you've summed it up pretty perf- perfectly. It was a mix of really good, really bad, and really ugly at times. It was one of the weirdest ownerships. If you put it on paper over 11 years, it was one of the weirdest ownerships. There are plenty of goods that we will talk about in a minute in terms of legacy, but I think ultimately three or four years in, that was the moment that probably changed him from a local, a man who had been working and helping the local industry for many, many decades into perhaps a bit of a pariah and a man that they, or a family that they wanted out of the club. And that was probably the, the biggest shame of it because that was a time where Hull were doing really well. They'd got back to the Premier League. It was the same season that got mentioned that they reached the FA Cup final, then they went into Europe. I don't know if it was just trying to ride the crest of, a, crest of a wave, but it was all such an unnecessary moment, which seemed to completely disengage the fans for something that they were right on board with. So as you say, that's probably the ugliest part of it. I think it didn't have help later down the line where Obviously, Assem, the original owner, fell a little bit unwell and his sons had come in, uh, become more involved and probably didn't have the same enthusiasm either for the city or certainly the football club as he had. But yeah, I think that's definitely the ugly side of it. A little bit bizarre, um, but there are plenty of positives as well, which I guess we have to move on to. Yeah, um, let's get on to the positive. Prom- as we said, three uh, promotions, two to the Premier League uh, very early on in his reign. Uh, obviously, the last promotion was last season when they come out of League One to the Championship. But he said the FA Cup final under uh, Steve Bruce, they were 2 0 up in that game against Arsenal, and it, it was the perfect start for them, but they, they just fell away. Yeah, probably as a, I've got to say this as a neutral, probably one of my favourite FA Cup finals of the last 15 or 20 years. It had a bit of everything, didn't it? Albeit that ultimately it would have been great if the underdog won, but it was a fabulous game. Obviously, for us, we saw a, a Luton youth player, Curtis Davis, shining in that game. I always absolutely loved Tom Huddleston, so I had a bit of a vested interest in it for that as well. But it was it was probably the, the pinnacle moment for, for Hull City. That, obviously, the result in small European adventure and the fact that it, it came off the back of being back in the Premier League and having excitement at the top level. It was just a, a wonderful season. And weirdly, given the situation with other takeovers in English football in recent weeks and months... Steve Bruce a bit of a hero in this one. Yeah, and Steve Bruce is the, the main hero. Obviously, he took Hull up twice, took him to the FA Cup final, took him into Europe, really. And it, he left at the start of the 16-17 season, literally a week before, um, because over players not coming into the club, he wanted to obviously strengthen his side. Didn't really work out. And that really started the downfall. Yeah, it sort of led to the, the bad, really, which was the situation where... Obviously, the Alain family eventually said, look, they were looking to sell the club. And we've had sort of four, four and a half years where that's then not been able to happen. And that had to reduce the investment because it was clear that they weren't that as invested in the club anymore. It also comes down to the same sort of time they were introducing weird, unique ticket membership schemes at the time, which we're not going to get into in too much detail, but did cause some of the, the negativity with the fan base as well. So Probably it's an era, if you take on the pitch purely and take out the the name change side of things, it probably was an era split into two, wasn't it? Up to that second promotion with Steve Bruce was probably the good. And since then has probably largely been the negatives, despite the odd moment of success, as you mentioned, coming back from League One to the Championship. And I think crucially for, for the new owner of Chun coming in now is that they're still in the fight in the Championship this season, which for a long time near the start of the year, I think we both said that we didn't think would necessarily happen at that stage where they weren't scoring for five, six, seven games. So, look, there's a positive for the Alam family. They're making a profit on the club. They bought them for, what, a pound to save them from administration in 2010. The deal's reported to be 20 to 30 million, somewhere in that region. And 
look, they've given a lot to the community. Aside from the, the problems with the football club, they've dedicated lots of money for the building of NHS Trust, for the, the support of building university buildings, and they've sponsored local events as well. So they have done a lot for the community, but unfortunately their, their era will always be tinged with moments of madness and unnecessary negativity. Absolutely, absolutely. And the last bit, obviously, with uh, Asim Alam is he said something on the lines of, I'm not a football fan. I've never been a football fan. fan. I'm a community fan. If he was a whole city fan, would you appreciate those comments? No, no, no. I think, look, let's be honest. Once the name change thing hadn't gone through, the, the PR lines were very different from the football club. He came in and immediately as a saviour. There's no doubt, there's no doubt whatsoever that, the man loves Hull and the man did a lot to save Hull and he's helped local community in Hull. But I think once he couldn't get his way on the football inside to make it a profitable business for him, I think later down the line, it became a let's run at a break even. We're not going to worry about investing too much and we'll wait until the next owner comes along, which has probably taken a lot longer than they anticipated in their defence. But They've got one now, and I'm sure it's something to look forward to. And I tell you what, if there's one place I'd like to be tonight, Craig, it would be at the whole City Stadium because it is going to be a raucous atmosphere. So let's get on to the new owner of Hull City, Akim Irakali. He's obviously from Turkey. He's a TV producer, businessman, entrepreneur, owns the TV channels TV8 and TV8.5. He knows his football. He supports Venerbahce, so... That's good. He knows some football sense in that, but it's obviously going to be different with Turkish football compared to English football. And you wouldn't buy an English football club without knowing the understanding of the English game. Yeah, it's it's both the positive and the negative side of this story to me, which is, look, there's no doubt that he is a ridiculously good businessman. Obviously, he's been put down as the Turkish Simon Cowell due to his entertainment projects, the fact that he's got an investment in a lot of similar versions of their TV programmes. But the... The worry for me, and we've seen it a lot across the continent in particular, and I'm not stereotyping nations, but it's something that quite often pops up in Italy, Turkey, uh, Greece, and nations of that ilk in terms of the footballing world, is owners that want a little bit too much interest in the football inside. That's my worry at this point, because look, it wouldn't be the first time it's happened in English football. It's happened before, where manage, uh, where owners want to be a manager, basically. And we've seen that it can be a hugely disruptive influence to a football club. The positive is he's clearly a man that loves football. He's clearly a man that's got money and is willing to invest. Even in his interviews the last couple of weeks, he's been talking about, can we get whole promotion to the Premier League season? Can we be a Leicester City? Can we be a West Ham? Can we be in that top six of the Premier League? Which is great. It's amazing ambition. It's amazing commitment. But again, what's going to happen if... Maybe they do get relegated this year, which is not beyond the realms of possibility. I don't think it's rude to say that. There is a chance. And if that happens, do you then lose interest because you can't get out of League One, which is a league that's currently got 10, 11, 12 massive football clubs in there? And I just hope that he's got the commitment and the long-term vision to match it. If he has, Hull City, by the way, are going to have a wonderful time. And the club's there with a great infrastructure, a good stadium, good training facilities, some very good young players, albeit that might be a problem for later in this month. But they are a club that is essentially on the up, despite a a stutter in season. They had a great performance in the FA Cup just a couple of weeks ago against the Premier League side. And they've got the fans reignited, which is the most important thing. If you can turn that into a positive, you could have a wonderful year or two. I just hope that the money spent wisely, I hope that the now he's into the club, he's got the fans on board board, that the tones become a bit more realistic and engaged because Grant McCann at the moment, he needs help with the right types of players to keep this club in the, in the championship. Otherwise next season and the season after aren't going to be important. Let's get on to transfers. Uh, They were under transfer embargo anyway, because of this takeover deal to be completed. Uh, There's 12 days left in this transfer window. Will you see Hull make signings to survive and will there be Grant McCann signings? Well, I think they have to make signings simply. I mean, we've talked about it a lot this season. They had the, the longest run without scoring in the championship of any team this season. They're the second lowest scorers above Barnsley, who are bottom of the league. Defensively, they're not bad. So there are some positives there. But I mean, even from watching Hull at Kennel with Frode earlier in the season, my immediate would be they need to find a goal scorer. I think the situation may be complicated by the fact that 
Probably their star young attacking player, King Lewis Potter, is taking the interest of several clubs. I think Brentford are the latest to be linked with him. And it's going to be very hard to turn down both January Premier League money and for a player, a Premier League opportunity when he's got 18 months on his contract, probably a best chance to get a good deal. So there are going to be some, some ups and downs, I think, over the next 12 days for Hull. And I just hope that they have business sense on that side. But ultimately, Craig, We've talked about this before. Barnsley are in complete disarray. Derby have had 21 points off, and I know they're doing fantastically, but, I mean, at the moment, that might be our next special as to whether they're making the end of the season, unfortunately. So there's still a lot of doubt there. Reading are in disarray. Peterborough can't pick up a point away from home. And there's other clubs in the mix like Cardiff and Bristol City and Birmingham that are starting to struggle both on or off the pitch, respectively. So it's not out of the question that Hull will stay up and stay up comfortably by default almost, but they have to get signings in. They have to get someone going forward. I don't think they need to go blockbuster this January. I don't think it's going to help to go blockbuster and try and get big names and big deals in. I mean, we've seen the same in the Premier League with Newcastle, haven't we, quite frankly, at the bottom of the league, which is getting players that are suitable for your situation. And I think Hull need to do that this January and then probably move on to the summer, make sure you're a championship club. And then if he's true to his word and his goal is promotion next year, we're probably going to see a very big change in the transfer strategy and the spending structure at Hull City. I do worry, though, on the other side of that about the manager and whether he's going to be given the chance. Is the owner going to panic if there's three or four defeats? There's there's just so many questions, aren't there? I think that's the problem at this point. So let's get into a prediction. Obviously, not the prediction for the game tonight against Blackburn. You already said Blackburn were going to win the game regardless. You're saying that Hull probably might go down in, in the end of the season. Let's let's go into the future. Where do you see Hull going? Well, at the start of this season, I think I predicted Hull to finish 22nd because I think they were a goal scorer behind the rest of them. I think they'll solve that now. I think they may stay up by, by default because I think there's every chance it will be Barnsley, Derby and Reading going down. Two of those for non-footballing reasons. And I think they'll be in the championship next year. I am going to say straight off the bat, though, and it may come back to be one of our infamous Twitter clips of someone getting something very wrong. I don't think they're going to go up to the Premier League next season. I'm going to say that now. And I think that that a Chunnanu owner is going to find it a little bit more difficult to get out of one of the toughest leagues in the world, even with a bit of spending power uh, than he probably thought it was going to be. And he won't be the first person that's fallen foul of that. But if he invests in the right way, if he allows the footballing side of the club to manage the football team, I believe the posit- the future is positive. And I think they will gradually become a very solid championship club, work their way up. There's no reason they can't be in a playoff mix next season because there's about 100 teams involved in that every year. And it goes down to two thirds of the table. So there's definitely an opportunity for progression. I'm going to be honest, I don't think Grant McCann will be in charge next year. I think he'll be given the season to keep them up. But ultimately, I think that's where their first big name will come in the summer as a manager. And I think they'll have a a solid mid-table year next year, but probably not the promotion push they're hoping for. Yeah, I I don't think I will get up next season. I think that's too ambitious to go, oh, we're going to be promoted next season. And you you saw that with Leeds. When Leeds had that takeover, oh, we're going to go and smash the league. And they were nearly there and they blew it. And they obviously got promoted the season after, but they needed that learning curve. I think the owners needed that learning curve. It's, as you said, it's not easy going out the championship. It's one of the hardest yet best leagues in the world. I, I generally think it's better than the Premier League, yep. uh, just because you see ridiculous score lines. You see like a lower, I say teams like Luton, they pick up a 3 2 win against probably a, a big team like Bournemouth. And then you see the big team like Fulham winning six, well, seven nil twice away from home. So anything obviously can happen. I can't. I think it needs it needs a steady ship. It needs to be calm for a couple of seasons. It's been too up and down and too negative. It needs that state stability. I think the only, the only will bring that stability. Fans will come back into the stadium now, which is, would be pleasing because it obviously it had that similar situation with Blackpool, where they, they want to spend money for the owners rather than actual club itself. And that's and, and I'm not I'm not blaming the fans at all on that. I don't think Grant McCann will last the season. I I don't think he'll last. I don't think by mid February, I think he might go, and, I be and that's a shame. And it's a shame because he's, he's he's doing he's done a wonderful job. Obviously, he came at a time where whole, obviously before the pandemic, 
were in disarray. They lost their two best players in Jared Brown and Kemal Grzycki. They lost 16 out of 20. This obviously deserved to go down. I think we said that when, I, when we first done these uh, the predictions. They deserve to go down. And he's he done very well to win the league next year. And then lost stars so, again, by the way. And lost stars again. Of course, and it, obviously Hull... Oh, it's a bit harsh to say they're a selling club, but they are selling clubs because they send their good most players. Obviously, most clubs are. Yeah, obviously, most clubs are. Um, but also, they send them obviously to the players in the Premier League get a little bit of money for that. But they do fight hard, and you have to give them a little bit of credit on, on that. Um, so yeah, for me, stability. Take your time. If I was in, if I was my advice to the new owner, even though he probably won't ever watch this channel, but my advice is take your time. Don't rush into things because it all goes wrong. And that's our thoughts on the takeover at Hull City. Uh, let us know down in the comment section what you think will happen to Hull and how your thoughts on this takeover. Uh, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast, and you can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>